Okay, this video is on efficiency, and we're going to apply, one thing I'm going to ask you to do is to apply the efficiency formula to any working system, define efficiency for any working system, and translate the language of that system and apply it to a formula. Mostly this one right here. Use the formula given some descriptions. So the first thing is our definition. Mechanical efficiency is the percentage of total energy that is actually converted into usable work. And this is done by, could be a machine, could be a process, um, how efficient is, I don't know, solar panels at converting solar energy. That would be more of a process than an actual machine. Our formula, many of you discovered online, it's input work, or sorry, output, divided by input work, times 100. Now, this is what I mean by it. I want you to translate the language of your experiments, or what you're looking at, into this formula because things will rarely be described to us as input and output work. The best example was in your lab, the input work, which tends to be like before. You tried to do something, was the draw pipe. The output work tends to be the after, and that was your bounce height. So this is what I mean where I want you to translate the language of the experiment that you're doing into this formula right here. Because this is all I'm going to give you on a test. You need to be able to make sure the language of what you're looking at fits this formula. So here, here's a practice. In a car example, what are we talking about when we're looking at total energy available? All right? That's the input. What's the total energy available? What are we talking about when we talk about useful work? For the system. So, for the total available energy, this is usually joules of potential energy. This is chemical potential energy in the gasoline. That's how much is available in a full tank. We're talking about useful work. This would be the output. And that's work by the engine. Or force times. Distance is our big one. The force changes, but overall, we can tell how far did we go, given how much gasoline we had. This is why we use miles per gallon. It's a comparison. It's an efficiency measure. Okay, we already talked about this. So here's an example problem. A small engine takes in 400 joules of gas in each cycle, only does 360 joules of work. What's the efficiency? Our formula is output over input times 100. The work that it does, this is work that we wanted it to do. This is the useful work. The input was how much it takes in. Input takes in. So it's 360 divided by 400 times 100. Now pay attention. Let's try, where's a calculator? Do I have one? Here's one. 360 divided by 400 equals times 100 equals 90%. The joules cancel out. And we're, when we're doing efficiency, we're only left with a percentage. 
And that's a pretty standard problem that I'm going to ask you to do. This will be your extra credit example. How would you label the barriers? We're going to start with this to measure the efficiency of a microwave heating water. So um, the input is the electricity it uses. We need to find that in joules. The output is energy to heat water, which we can solve with Q equals mc change in T. Alright, this is our energy to heat. How much heat went into that mass of water? So, the efficiency to heat a 90, 900, 900 watt microwave heating 500 grams of water from 18 to 80 Celsius in one minute. So what's the efficiency? And here's your hint. Watts just means joules per second. And this is a three-step process. Input, output, and the efficiency. Try to solve it on your own by pausing the video. I'll walk you through it. Uh, the input is total energy used, which is joules per second, 900, that's what watts means, times how many seconds was it on for? One minute, that's times 60. Output energy is heat into water. Q equals mc change in T. 0 0.5 kilograms times 4184 times the change in temperature, which is 62 degrees Celsius. 0 0.5 times 4184 times 62. Okay, I worked this out, and it actually made an impossible scenario. The input is 5,400 joules, but the output energy is 129,704 joules. So it's like almost three times as much energy came out than you put in, and that's impossible. You can't get energy from nothing. The efficiency would be that number times 100. So I made these numbers up in my head not realizing that uh, <laughs> I made an impossible machine above 100% efficiency. Let's see what the numbers are. So the answer is 240% efficient. Uh, but at least you saw the steps in the process. This is good, because I got to show you this is impossible. You can't have above 100% efficiency. That would be creating energy from thin air. Uh, but the total used, we just joules per second times seconds. That's how much our input is, our electricity consumed. Our output energy was used by the change in temperature and water. And then the input output over input times 100 for the efficiency. This will be a sample extra credit question. It will look just like this. 